The call to worship this morning is a reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 26. Jesus said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Humanity will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and took counsel together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and to kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be a tumult among the people. Please join me in the call to confession from Psalm 69, followed by a moment of silence. Save me, Lord, for thy love is steadfast and good. According to thy abundant love, turn to me. Hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in distress. Draw near to me, set me free.
Now please join me in the assurance of God's grace. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou hast no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give a burnt offering, thou would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to thee is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Today's reading comes from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Hello everybody, in case you don't recognize this face behind the mask, uh, I'm Jeff Kunkel, interim pastor here at First Presbyterian, standing out here in the courtyard on a weekday. And uh, it's the first time I've ever had to preach in a mask like this. They say if you live long enough, you get to experience everything. And I think that must be true. Wearing rubber gloves, just common practical steps we can take against this invisible enemy that's among us. I still have not found anyone within our congregational circle whom I know has the, uh, the virus, so that's a good sign, but it seems like things are closing in. So this morning for the sermon, I do want us to think about the whole season of Lent as a beginning. The season of Lent is that 40 days of preparation uh, when we experience the final weeks and months of Jesus' journey from Galilee to Jerusalem. And it's a fate-filled and a heavy time in the life of Jesus and of his disciples because they know a reckoning is coming. At least Jesus knows it and occasionally says that to his disciples and they say, no, 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 no. It'll all be fine. It'll all be fine. Coming up now on the Palm Sunday, we come up to the Sunday when we typically celebrate the scripture story where Jesus is entering Jerusalem. Now, if we've been around church for a while, most of us have probably learned this story as the triumphant 
re-entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. I want to give us a, a different way to think about this entry into Jerusalem for Jesus that I think is more in line with what actually happened and, and reveals more about our faith life. First of all, it's good to understand why there was a reckoning coming in Jerusalem for Jesus. And it had to do with two very different ways of controlling and having power in the world. And the first way, which we all recognize to one or one extent or another in our own lives, is, is what they called then the Empire of Rome. And the Empire of Rome ruled by the emperor, it ruled by political domination, it ruled by economic exploitation, and it was constantly trying to legitimize itself through religious story and symbol. For instance, the emperor was often called the son of God. So this was one way of reality in the world at that time, the empire of Rome and everybody had to reckon with it. The other way of reality at that point in the world, and still among us today, we often call the kingdom of God, or the realm of God. And it wasn't interested in the same values at all that the empire of Rome was interested in. It was interested in peace, the prince of peace was coming, the suffering servant was coming, not one of the wealthy folks who was appointed to rule, but a suffering servant rising from the peasants. It was a peasant-led reality. It was concerned with justice and peace and fairness. And so you can see that these two different realities are coming to meet each other in Jerusalem on this day in Holy Week and this is what we experience this central conflict in the life of Jesus and in our own life and times. I want to take us back in time now to that Passover day in ancient Jerusalem the year 30 AD when Jesus was making his way into Jerusalem. Jesus wasn't the only one making his way into Jerusalem on that high festival because there was a tradition in that era of Israel where the governor of the empire would also make an entrance into Jerusalem on that day just to be there in case the Jews caused any trouble. So on this day, so long ago, we can see the power of the empire coming in through the person of Pontius Pilate. He comes in through the West Gate in Jerusalem, which is the most impressive gate. And he comes in with cavalry. He comes in with chariots. He comes in with foot soldiers and staff and troops, beautiful horses, all decorated out for a sumptuous entrance. Now there was another entry into Jerusalem on that day, and that was from the east gate of Jerusalem, the modest gate, mostly where the peasants entered the city, and that was where Jesus chose to enter Jerusalem on that day. And he came as a representative of that whole other reality we call the kingdom of God. He did not come on horses. Remember, he came on a colt that was borrowed from someone in the city. He came with a gaggle of disciples and followers, not hundreds of troops who were donned out in special gear. He was not surrounded by thousands of cheering people in Jerusalem. He was surrounded by only his followers who were all peasants like him. And there on this day, those two processions, representing the two very different realities, come into conflict. And one way to understand the placement of those two gates in Jerusalem is to just think about where we are right now. 
we're right on the corner of 26th and Broadway here on the corner where the church was built and Broadway of course is the central main corridor in the city of Oakland it's where anybody would want a decent parade or festival to be held it's where the Warriors came into town to celebrate their championship tens of thousands of people lined the street to see the Warriors it's where First Presbyterian decided to build their great building on Broadway a place of status and prestige and power. All right, Broadway's in the back of us now, and we're walking down 26th Street, which is a cross street where the church is located. Right now, we're walking by the redwood that was planted here so long ago by Don and his father. Now, this is a very inconspicuous street small buildings not as well kept as broadway this is the back side of the church as well probably the side many of you haven't seen one thing you might not have seen is this very handsome playground here that was uh, built by head start and you'll notice they're of course not in school at this time so we're walking down an ordinary side street now the kind of street that Jesus would have chosen to enter Oakland, I think, if he had come here during the Passover. So let's imagine that 26th Street is the kind of street that Jesus would have entered into, used deliberately for his entrance, because his entrance was not showing the power of the empire or the values of the empire. It was showing the power and value of the kingdom of God. Remember, this was the suffering servant, Jesus, the peasant Jesus leading a group of followers into the city in such a contrast to Pontius Pilate leading a cavalry and all kinds of wonderful festivities on the other side of the city. These are the two realities that were present in Jesus' world. These are the two realities that are still present in our world and inside of us. And we have to decide which procession will we be a part of. Stay safe. Dear Heavenly Creator, thank you so much for your gifts of steadfast love and grace. God, we pray for those all across the world who are suffering right now, whether it be due to the coronavirus or poverty, or war, or lack of access to food, shelter, and medical supplies. God, we ask that you be with them now, and that you help them through this time of fear in their lives, and that you be with them for as long as they need, forever. God, we pray for this country that our leaders are able to hear wisdom that only you can share to help your people get through this epidemic. God, we pray for all of those out there who are sheltered in place, who are alone and lonely or in abusive home situations. We pray that you feel their presence and remind them that this is only a moment and it will pass. God, we pray for all our medical professionals. We pray for doctors and nurses and CNAs and janitors and sterile employees, that you help give them the energy they need to serve those and then some. God, we pray for first Presbyterian Church of Oakland and all those watching that you help ease their minds and that you help remind them to lean into you and fear not but forge forward. I'd like also to pray for those that are living outside or unhoused 
that you help them find the shelter and the supplies that they need to survive. God, in your graciousness, we offer up the prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.